Welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today, we continue with Radar and ARPA, Part 2. We'll look at radar errors, the differences between X-band and S-band radar, important navigation aids, the concepts of blind and shadow sectors, step-by-step -step radar setup and operation, and finally, ground versus sea stabilization. Let's dive in. Let's talk about errors in marine radar. For accurate navigation and collision avoidance, it's important to understand where mistakes can happen. First, range errors. These occur when the radar misjudges distance. Calibration errors can cause the range scale to misalign. Timing errors may lead to inaccuracies in pulse measurement. And longer pulse lengths increase the minimum detectable range. Under normal conditions, the typical accuracy is about plus or minus 30 meters. Next, bearing errors. If the antenna isn't aligned properly with the ship's heading marker, or if the beam is too wide, accuracy and resolution go down. Gyro errors also play a role, because incorrect gyro input affects both bearing and true vector calculations. In good conditions, bearing accuracy is usually within plus or minus one degree. Then we have transmission and propagation errors. This includes anomalous propagation, like superrefraction, subrefraction, and ducting, as well as attenuation caused by heavy rain or snow, which reduces range. Ship structures may also create shadow or blind sectors where echoes are lost. Operational and display errors are another category. For example, side lobe echoes can create false returns. Multiple echoes may appear from strong targets like land or large ships. Indirect echoes can happen when signals reflect from the mast or funnel before reaching the antenna. And sweep-to-sweep -sweep jitter causes slight variations in successive scans. Finally, we need to consider clutter and interference. Sea clutter from waves can hide small targets. Rain clutter masks real echoes during precipitation and radar-to-radar -radar interference shows up as periodic spokes on the display. So, as you can see, there are many types of errors, but knowing them helps mariners interpret radar correctly and avoid false assumptions. To overcome some of these challenges, most ships carry both X-band and S-band radars because they complement each other. Here's how they differ. X-band radars operate at 9 GHz with a 3 cm wavelength. They offer very high resolution, making them excellent at detecting small targets. However, they are more affected by rain, fog and sea clutter, and they work best for short to medium ranges, up to about 48 nautical miles. S-band radars, on the other hand, operate at 3 GHz with a 10 cm wavelength. They have lower resolution, so they're not as good at detecting small objects, but they perform much better in heavy weather. S-band radars can reach longer distances, up to 96 nautical miles. Because of this, their uses are different. X-band radars are mainly for collision avoidance and navigation in coastal or pillotage waters. They're great for spotting buoys, small boats and floating objects, thanks to their smaller antenna and better bearing accuracy. S-band radars are more suited for long-range detection in the open sea and during heavy weather. They're reliable in adverse conditions and essential for detecting large ships, coastlines and land masses. With this foundation, let's look at the navigation aids that work together with radar. Radar doesn't work alone. It often works in conjunction with specialized navigation aids that improve position fixing and accuracy. The two most important are RAMARC and RACON. RAMARC, or radar marker, provides bearing information only. It transmits signals continuously or at set intervals, and its coverage is omnidirectional. In other words, it radiates in all directions. On the radar display, RAMARC appears as a simple radial line from the center. Sometimes it looks like a series of dots or dashes, and sometimes as a continuous line. 
Raycon, or radar beacon, is more advanced. Unlike Raymark, Raycon provides both bearing and range information. It only responds when interrogated by a ship's radar, and it works with both X and S band. Each Raycon emits a unique identification code in Morse, which shows up as a coded radial line on the radar display. To put it simply, Ramark is always transmitting. It's a bearing-only aid, giving a basic radial line. Raycon is triggered only when needed, and it provides both bearing and range with Morse code identification. These aids are extremely valuable in navigation. They enhance position-fixing accuracy, especially in coastal waters, during restricted visibility, and in congested shipping areas. They serve as reliable reference points, helping navigators avoid confusion and reduce collision risk. Now, let's see what the blind and shadow sectors. A blind sector is an area completely blocked by ship structures like funnels, masts, or accommodation blocks. Targets in this sector are invisible, which is dangerous. A shadow sector is partially blocked. Targets appear, but their echoes are weak, delayed, or distorted. Multiple obstructions can create several shadow sectors. The next topic is radar setup and operation. Step 1. Power on. Switch on the radar. Warm up for 2 to 3 minutes. Select a range scale. Short for coastal navigation, long for open sea. Step 2. Initial controls. Tune manually for the sharpest echoes. Adjust gain so weak targets remain visible, but background speckle disappears. Use STC to suppress sea clutter near the ship. Use FTC to suppress rain clutter at long ranges. Step 3. Display setup. Adjust brilliance and contrast. Align the heading marker. Display range rings. Set EBL and VRM for target measurement. Step 4. Performance check. Check tuning using fixed targets. Verify heading marker alignment with visual bearings. Cross-check radar ranges with GPS or ECHE dies. Record blind or shadow sectors in the bridge log. Step 5. Operational use. Change range scales frequently. Continuously monitor targets. Use ARPA or plotting to assess risk of collision. Use trial maneuver if fitted. Always combine radar with visual observations and other navigation aids, as required by Collareg Rule 7. In orals, the examiner may follow this up with Which settings would you adjust in heavy rain? The answer is FTC, gain. Which settings for coastal pilotage? Short range, higher gain, reduce STC. How do you check the performance of radar? Use performance monitor slash known targets. Now, let's see. Ground versus sea stabilization. Ground stabilized mode. Uses GPS or Doppler log with gyro input. Targets move relative to the seabed. Useful for navigation, restricted waters, anchoring and parallel indexing. But it is not suitable for collision avoidance. Example, in a tidal stream, ground-stabilized radar shows true land relative tracks, but collision risk must still be assessed by sea stabilization. Sea stabilized mode uses log and gyro to show target motion relative to water, best for collision avoidance since vessels move relative to the water. Limitation affected by currents and set, so overground motion may differ. Example, if a strong current exists, CPA slash TCPA may appear safe on radar, but in reality, overground, the situation may be different. Extra tip for orals. If asked, which stabilization will you use in open sea for collision avoidance? The answer is sea stabilization. If asked, which stabilization for coastal navigation? Ground stabilization. That concludes Radar and ARPA. Part 2. We covered radar errors, differences between X-band and S-band, navigation aids, blind and shadow sectors, radar setup and operation and stabilization modes. 
If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Beyond the Horizon for more maritime learning. Join us in the next session where we'll dive deeper into advanced radar